Welcome to A Simple Life. Okay, we have torn apart one of our potato towers. I did that on a live stream, but I wanted to put a video together that both showed you where the potato towers started, kind of how they grew through the whole season, as well as how this final potato tower turned out. So I want to show you a trick Herman was just telling me about. I was asking about cutting potatoes, what he thought about cutting the potatoes in half. And he said he did it, but the way that he did it was you dipped them in ash, right? Yeah. yeah. So he was saying with the big ones, you take them and- I'm dipping. And so I got some ash here. So dip them in ash, that's right. And he, and he said, you just dip them in ash. That's right. And it helped prevent them from rotting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So we're gonna try that. I, I've never tried that method. I have cut them in half before. Well, they grow. They grow. And I've had them just grow, but I always wondered why or why he didn't do it because oh, sure. with age comes wisdom. Sure, you can do it. Now here, see this and here. Cut that one about about like this, then you got an eye. Good idea. eyes on, yeah. yeah, 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 okay. Our potato towers are doing amazing. They really are coming along. They're all starting to sprout. There's still new sprouts coming out every day. We see a new couple sprouts. Okay, so we're getting, we're still getting a lot of fresh little shoots coming out. It's doing really good. I don't know what happened to this guy. The way I've been checking the moisture on this, one of the commenters said that they would do the same method, but they put a PVC pipe in the middle that had some holes drilled in it. And I was like, oh, that's a really good idea. And then I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna test the moisture. And what I did was I just put my, put a, I actually put this right down the center. And that's kind of how I've been testing the moisture. And I still have plenty of moisture in there. So my leaves are doing good. This is a little, this looks a little dry. Um, it may be time to put some more water on these. I haven't watered them in like two weeks. Uh, literally, I haven't watered them in two weeks because it's not been super hot and it hasn't been super dry and there's still tons of moisture in there. I mean, just tons. The really cool part about these towers, if you remember, I'll show you a photo, they were this tall before. They've literally dropped two feet in height, which is very, very interesting. Um, I, it's what you expect when compost starts to break down, it starts settling. So in the future, I may really tower these up, knowing that everything's gonna settle, and I may do a lot more spacing on my potatoes and leave my potatoes a lot farther apart. Because right now I put them in about 10 inches apart, layer-wise. I think it was about 10 inches, eight to 10 inches. I bet you my potatoes are all growing right on top of each other, uh, which is not a bad thing. I'm not gonna complain about that. It's just, it's a thing. Is that re really what I want? Is that the effect that I was looking for? Not really, I was looking for more of a, of a, you know, 10 inches or so of spacing between my potatoes. So in the future, I may have to space them close to a foot. The great part is I haven't had a gopher or anything touch these. So I'm happy about that. So there are some really great things I've already learned before we even open this one up. I've already learned just from seeing the crop that we got off of the first one. Not as many potatoes as I would have thought. So I started thinking about it a couple months ago and it kind of the idea, the thought of what this crop was probably going to look like started kind of rolling around the back of my head because I started seeing we had really vigorous growth. And I started thinking if we have really, really vigorous growth on the leaves, I wonder what's happening inside. And I thought we might have too much nitrogen in our medium. Our soil or our soil substitute may have too much nitrogen in it. And that might be the reason for this vigorous growth. So that's one of the things I kind of learned. I think that's part of what we're gonna be dealing with when we open up this one. The other thing is, so there's still a lot of decomposition going on. So I think in the future, what I will do if I'm gonna do this method is I will use a very mellow, a very well composted, compost to do this but I'll put this stuff around the edge the reason for putting it around the edge is this will hold 
my compost inside my panel. Now I could just use straw or hay for that, but I like to start getting this stuff to compost and break down as well as I like to use it to feed my potato plants. Now I'm obviously gonna do this again next year. And when I do it again next year, we'll find out if this method that I'm talking about right now works. It may take a couple years for us to really dial this method in. Once it gets dialed in, we'll have a really good method of using our goat bedding and how we use it to get great potatoes. Because I think, from what I've seen in the past, this is all based off of the fact that one year we had thrown some potatoes that were in a compost pile into our goat bedding when we came out the next year and there was tons of potatoes. It wasn't even on purpose. I just forgot to turn the compost pile and the potatoes had gone to seed and there was just tons of potatoes everywhere. And so for me, that's one of those things that when I see it work, I gotta figure out why it worked then and didn't work now. So what I'm thinking is I had better compost underneath of the bedding. So I think the bedding was just light and fluffy enough to help the potatoes take off. So it might've been that better compost underneath that was the reason for all the success with the potatoes. It may have not been the goat bedding directly. It may have been the overall composition of good compost with goat bedding on top of it. And why I say goat bedding on top of it? Well, goat bedding is made up of a lot of, in our case, hay, because goats don't eat all the hay. They throw it around and make a mess. And so that, hay becomes bedding. So let's open this one up. Let's see what it looks like on the inside. Not all of it is dyed back, but for the most part, we've got about 90% dye back on this. Now I do want to show you something really interesting. I talked about this in the live stream and I found it. And so now I want to share it with you. I didn't even know it was still around. I actually had potatoes growing outside of the soil. And those are actual potatoes. They're little, little guys got little nubbins on them. So this was the first kind of clue that we were gonna have some odd results. And I'll have to look up why, but I have never, I mean, I've already looked up why, I couldn't find it. So I'm gonna have to dig around some more to see if I can find why this has happened. But this is, this is what I was talking about. A little potato starting to sprout outside of soil. So we'll save that for later, we'll take a look. Let's open this up and I'll show you kind of how I open it up. You guys, when I built this, I showed you that I just took a cattle panel, I cut it in half, uh, and so I had two eight-foot sections. It was a 16-foot cattle panel, and then I took the spine out of the middle to make sure I had these long fingers on both sides. And then I'm just gonna open these up like that, nice and straight, or as straight as I can get them, with the idea that if they're nice and straight, they'll slide out this way. I'm gonna peel it back like that. But let's start opening this up and see what we got in here. And we'll see about how many pounds of potatoes we got off of these two. So this is very similar to the first one. Really didn't see much on the top, probably six to eight inches. Got some nice big juicy worms. Good sign. A little potato. All right. More little potatoes. See, this is this is interesting. And we got some white potatoes. That's because Herman borrowed one of my potatoes and then returned the potato back to me. There you go. There's some more. There's a lot of smaller ones in here, a lot of smaller ones for sure. But 
once again, it's all learning. We'll figure it out as we go. That's some odd shaped guys, but hey, they're, they're edible. Oh, we got some scab. Yeah, see this one's starting to be eaten. So we got some scab. The same thing with this one. And there's actually another one over here that's also breaking down. It's already decomposing. So my conclusions after getting this haul, I wouldn't call it too big of a haul. It's a, it's a haul of an experiment, so I'm okay with that. There's definitely some learnings here. I think temperature-wise, I didn't realize how hot this stuff was gonna get. I didn't think it was gonna get any warmer because of the fact that it already wasn't warm. It wasn't hot and we were, it should have been hot if it was gonna be hot. That's my assumptions. But because of probably how thick it was, which is not very thick on the ground, uh, that wasn't the case. The case was as soon as I piled it up, it had plenty of air to feed the composting process. The composting process took off. And then a good portion of this pile's potatoes have damage from bugs, worms and stuff because the pile was so <laughs> full of worms and bugs and all kinds of organisms that were breaking down the compost. So my potatoes in some cases became the next thing to break down. So that's not a huge deal, but it is a deal, it happened. It's something I, I wanna be aware of. So I think going forward, I'm going to do what I was saying I'm gonna do. I'm gonna use a little bit more uh, good soil compost mix, just off the land. We have some really good topsoil here, but probably that with maybe a 50-50 a split between good topsoil and compost, and then put the bedding around the edge uh, because the bedding did a really good job, a really good job of keeping moisture in. We did not have to do a lot of watering. It was, I mean, we almost didn't water them until like mid-July. It was like mid-July, I think, before we really started watering them. And then we would only water them once or twice a week for like five minutes with a little uh, uh, like garden head on the, on the hose. So it wasn't even turned up all the way. So we were, they weren't getting a ton of water, but that was enough that you could tell that they were good. Um, so I think that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna try the same thing next year. We're gonna do the exact same method. Maybe I'll do four or five of them next year because I have a little bit better idea of what I'm gonna be doing. And I think we're gonna do more with a, more of a compost type thing. I may also try to start one where I put one seed down, just one potato, and start at the bottom. And then every couple weeks come in, put a little bit more hay down and more uh, topsoil compost mix down and kind of build it up and see if I can't get that plant to keep growing up. I've heard of that method working. Uh, try it. Uh, Herman's told me about it. I've heard other people talk about it, but I want to try it using the same type of compost uh, topsoil goat bedding mixture. But yeah, so it's a learning experience. I, I definitely think probably the first year that it accidentally happened, I think it happened because there was good compost that the potatoes were in and the bedding was laid on top of it. The bedding probably gave enough moisture or enough heat and moisture for the uh, potatoes to start early. And that's why we had such a huge abundance in like late spring It came out and there's just a staggering amount of potatoes. Almost like a greenhouse would give it a boost of heat, you know, early spring to get all your plants started and then there's some some nutrients involved as well. But I'm not let down about this because this was way easier to harvest and to do than the rows. Now, we got, to give you an idea, we got half of one of these from those two. My beds gave me three and a half of these. I don't think I got an amazing yield, 
but it wasn't super hard. And I think with a little bit of tweaking, we can get an amazing yield like other folks have done. I know other people have done this where they put straw around the outside and they fill it with soil, with like potting soil or some type of soil. I know, but I'm trying to kind of figure out what I have on my land that I can use in substitute for some of these other methods as well as get really good yields like with that. And it's an experiment. 100 percent and this has been semi-successful with a lot of learning and then i can pass that knowledge on to my children which is one of those things that we kind of miss nowadays so much of it is just passed on to youtube but you have to sift through that and i know you're watching my channel so you're sifting through it right now too if you're wondering where the boys are at the boys are actually down getting their first job a neighbor wanted to hire them to watch his dogs while he's out of town and so i told them to go talk to him and he's actually the same gentleman we did the firewood for last year. All right, thank you guys so much for joining us today on A Simple Life. We appreciate you stopping by and we love that you came by and joined us. Have a good day, bye.